Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I just wanted to make a quick pre-intro to the intro. Um, I know that's a little weird, but I just wanted to mention that I kind of got this video idea from Zachary Michael. I know that he does a lot of ambulance recipes and things like that, but you know, the general consensus among everyone who makes their recipes is that they're not that good. So I figured I would just do something a little bit different and try to show her a way to improve her recipes or, or how easy it is to actually, you know, make a simple meal a little bit better, a little bit healthier, throw some vegetables in it, you know. But yeah, I hope you guys like it and I'd be interested, I'd be interested to see if Amber would actually try to make ramen this way or um, I know Chantel of Foodie Beauty is looking for healthier ways to make some of her favorite foods if she wants to respond to this. I know she's a fan of the homeless guys so <laughs> here you go right. So yeah I hope you guys enjoy and I I don't know maybe some people might might learn some recipes. Feel free to try it out yourself and yeah uh, definitely get, show some support to my editor. He's awesome Zach. He's a huge help with this channel and everything that I do here. And yeah, thanks guys. Enjoy. Hello all my homed friends. My name's Phoenix and welcome back to my channel. I recently saw a video on Amberlynn Reed's channel where she was boasting about how good of a ramen she makes. And I believe she had just taken some top ramen and threw some buffalo sausage in it. So this video is for her and for anyone else who's looking for ideas on how to spice up their ramen. I have made better ramens than that in jail. Uh, I've been on Struggle Street myself many times as I am myself right now. And I've always found many ways to get creative with my food. As some people may know, Amberlynn was actually partially an inspiration to me to start a channel. She was doing a donation to the homeless and you know, her and many other creators kind of use that as kind of, you know, like good person points. And I just kind of feel like a lot of people may not necessarily know what it's like to be homeless or they may have certain perceptions or preconceived notions of what it's like to be homeless. So I started my channel to kind of show my journey through what it's like for me to be homeless and my way out of it. So today I wanted to show you guys what I do to make ramen and how I can personally spice it up, make it, you know, a little more authentic. What I like to do, so I personally, I like to use this brand, especially if I'm making ramen that's of a Japanese style. Um, I use this brand, it's called Shin. Uh, today I'm gonna be using two of the black versions and one of the red. The red is spicy. But it says that the black's spicy, but the red's a lot more hotter. Uh, so how I like to do it is I use two blacks, one red. Amberlynn had also mentioned some people like their ramen without broth. Now, that would be considered Korean style. Um, so I do have, I do enjoy Korean ramen as well. This is a brand of Korean style ramen. If you are familiar with mukbangs or if you watch mukbang YouTubers, they do eat a lot of Korean style ramen. They'll have like the volcano noodles or what have you, but it is normally this brand right here. I personally like this one. It's the one that contains cheese flavoring, the carbo, chicken. It's still extremely hot. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do the volcano or the two times volcano, because even that one's hot. I can't even use a whole packet of the hot sauce they use in it. I have everything prepped already. Um, I have some stuff, so we're gonna get into this. It's a very versatile dish. You can, you can mix and match however you want. If you make something like this at home yourself, all you have to do is you make a big pot of the ramen noodles as they come and anyone in your family can add what they want, don't add what they don't like, and it's it's a it's an easy dish for the whole family. And yeah, especially if you have picky eaters, you don't have to, they don't have to put some of the things on here. Me personally, I'm gonna be using what I have. As we go, I'll give ideas for substitutions and talk about, you know, areas that you can skip, not use altogether 
different ways to swap things out, things like that. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. And yeah, let's get into this. All right, so what I do first, and some people may not know, that, know this, but I, I use fresh ginger. And how I peel it is I just use a spoon. You just take it and this can this will peel the skin right off the ginger. So what I normally do is I just kind of peel off enough of an opening to access the inside. But I find that a spoon is enough to take off the skin without, I don't know, wasting. And then once I have kind of enough of an opening, I'll either continue using the spoon or I'll start to grate some. And I'm gonna put that right in the pan first before I even heat it up or get started. I want to use a couple tablespoons, maybe, let's see, probably about two. So I'm gonna start with this, get some of this in the pan before I add the other ingredient. I will work on this and yeah, I'll see you in a moment. But I find that using like even, let's say if I wasn't using the grater and I continued on with the spoon, like this grates ginger just fine. All right, so now I got the ginger in the pan. It's about a tablespoon and a half. You don't need to use fresh ginger. You can use like the, there's a tubes of ginger that's kind of like pureed or whatever. You can use that as a substitute. I personally just prefer the fresh ginger. I'm now gonna add some of this crunchy garlic. It's a pre-fried garlic in chili oil. So I'm just gonna add a dollop, probably a teaspoon-ish in there. And then I've already prepared my butter slabs. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of butter and I'm gonna turn on the heat. All right, so we get this butter melting up now and my camera woman just definitely memed me, uh, referring to the two shots of vodka meme because this is definitely about three tablespoons of butter. Two shots of vodka? And not a tablespoon and a half as I had previously mentioned, but hey, I like cooking with butter. So I'm gonna use a, this is a full yellow onion cut into like strips like this. I'm gonna add that right in. If I was using fresh garlic, I would fry it first a little bit before adding my vegetables, but since it's already like a pre-fried garlic in, a, in oil, I'm just gonna throw my stuff right in. These are king oyster mushrooms. This is personally my favorite type of mushroom when making any sort of Asian dish. Um, I've julienned it here, but I will also insert a picture of what the mushrooms look like. You can also use shiitake mushrooms. You can also use any type of onion you would like. These are just personally my favorite. I'm gonna cook these down a little bit until they, the onions are translucent translucent and the mushrooms have a nice little sear on them. I'm gonna get it, just toss everything so it has a, everything's coated with the butter and all the other ingredients. Also at this point, I also like to add some salt and pepper. So this is some Himalayan salt. Just kind of go around, make sure I hit every area of the pan and then just some pepper. All right, all right, so I'll toss this and I will see you at our next step. All right, so here we have the onion and mushroom mixture and it's starting to cook down. You notice that the onions are starting to get a little translucent. 
the mushrooms are starting to take on some color and I will just continue on with this for probably about 5-10 minutes and then I will start to layer my meat on top of this so that it can kind of steam cook the meat. This is the meat I have. It is some pork belly, very thinly sliced. I have it marinating in some bulgogi seasoning, uh, well, bulgogi style, and that's just my preference. Um, you could just take some pork belly, do it however you would like. You could also cut up some Chinese sausage that they have. It's it's with the with uh, the breakfast sausage, I believe. It's the pink sausage that you see. Um, I use that on occasion. Sometimes I'll just cut up some ham, mix it with some teriyaki sauce, some sriracha, and some pineapple juice. About, about two cups of teriyaki, quarter cup of pineapple juice, and about an eighth of a cup of sriracha. And I'll make a marinade and just marinate some some like ham steak and make kind of like a spare rib. But yeah, you can, whatever type of meat you like. If you like chicken, you can do a, a teriyaki chicken. Uh, I just personally, I definitely like the pork belly or thinly sliced beef. But um, so what I'm gonna do is I will take this very slim, thinly sliced meat, I'll show you guys, and I'm gonna layer it on top of this. And if you can see all the steam and all the heat coming up out of the vegetables, that will cook the meat that is very thinly sliced. Um, I will then at that point, once the meat's done, I'll remove the meat and I will go on to add the rest of the vegetables. I have some sugar snap peas, bamboo shoots, and some bean sprouts. And then I'll just throw that in at the end, cook it up with my vegetables. Maybe I'll take these out, who knows, depending on how much space I have in the pan. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my water ready for the ramen. I have a wok right here. So I'll probably start that. And yeah, all right, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so at this point, I am gonna layer the meat on top of our mushroom and onion mixture. Now this, you, you can saute the meat separately depending on what you're using. Because of how thin, uh, because I have a very thin sliced meat here, like if you can see, it is very thin. I'm just gonna layer it right over top here. This is exactly how I also make my bulgogi. Um, I might do that in another video, I don't know. I just use beef instead of pork if I'm making that. But yeah, this is starting to smell great already at this point. I personally love just garlic and onions. The smell of garlic and onions cooking together. I don't know, it kind of always... It has a very home, homey type of feel to it, you know? Like, whenever I'm, I'm making a meal that that includes that, I always, it, it kind of takes me out of my situation for a little bit, and it just reminds me of, you know, cooking a nice big meal for family, and um, yeah, it's just very nice. You know, it's, especially sorts of like cinnamon smells, you know, I'm sure a lot of people can identify with that. But if you can see, like I, I, I'm layering the meat, very thin layer right on top. Now, I do have more meat than I have space, but this meat will cook very fast at, in this way. And I personally like to get my onions almost to the point of caramelization. It's not quite there. The meat, the meat's gonna cook but the onions and mushrooms will still have time. So, I'll start this like this, cook this meat, separate the meat into a clean bowl, finish the rest. And what that's gonna do is it, it puts flavor in the meat, but also puts flavors back into the vegetables. So I'm gonna let this go for a moment. Probably gonna start my water for the noodles, and I'll, we'll go from there. All right, so I just got some water in our wok here. I personally like to use spring water whenever I'm, I'm cooking a soup or something where I'm gonna ingest the water. I just think it, it just tastes better, you know? You don't know exactly what type of metals are in your tap water. Um, so I let it salt the water and start getting 
that up to temp for the noodles. And what I'm gonna do here at this point as well, is I'm gonna just drop two eggs right in the water. Um, you can, you can wait until it gets up to boiling first, but basically it takes about 15 minutes to get a nice hard boiled egg. I'm only gonna cook these for about 10. And I'm gonna time it right with our noodles so that everything will be done at the same time. The whole point is, is that I want the yolk to be a little runny in these hard boiled eggs. All right, so as you can see, this is our this is our meat on top of our onion mixture here. And you can see it's starting to cook up nice already. Um, it's starting to brown. As soon as this it doesn't have any more pink or red left in it, I will take off this batch of meat and add the rest. And as you can also see, you're starting to get a nice sauce. Now, when I am making uh, bulgogi, that sauce is is excellent for the rice. Um, it won't be used too much here. I mean, I definitely do throw some in my broth when I'm having my ramen. But when making bulgogi, it's perfect. Like this is the exact this is the exact type of sauce that you want here. It's very flavorful and it's great. All right, so I now have my second batch of meat on here cooking. If you can see right here, this meat's already taken care of. Now my water's getting up to temp here. I know I threw the eggs in early, but you know I really wanted to make sure that I had the timing right. So I took them out. I don't know. We're, the water's starting to get up to temp, so now I'm gonna drop them in. I just didn't wanna put them in like five minutes early because it's really important to me to have the yolks still on the loose or runny side because that's what I want to run into the broth and be able to mix in and finish cooking in the broth of the hot ramen. All right, so at this point I like to, well, it depends on what type of ramen that you're using, but I like to add my soup base powder and or seasoning packets, however you call it, and the dried vegetables. Uh, these are the types of packets you'll see in the more expensive ramens. Um, we have various soup packets, seasoning packets, and dried vegetable packets. And at this point, when the water is starting to reach a boil, that is when I will add all those. So that is what I'm working on now. I'm adding the packets from two black shin ramen packs and one red. And over here, our meat is starting to finish up. And I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna mix the, the remainder of the vegetables in with the onion and mushroom mixture. All right guys, so all my meat is now finished and I've taken that off to the side and put it, put it in a bowl. And I noticed that my onion and mushroom is actually right where I like to have it as far as texture wise or being cooked. So I'm just kind of spooning this out, leaving the sauce behind, and then I'm gonna cook the rest of my vegetables. Normally I, I, I did have it at a higher heat so I could get the meat cooked, and I believe that's what got my vegetables up to the doneness that I wanted. So I'm just pulling that out. I'm leaving the sauce behind because I definitely want that to flavor the rest here. So I'm now adding my sugar snap peas right to the pan. I have some bamboo. I ran out of bowls, sorry. So, oh, that guy's not supposed to be in there. All right, so I got some bamboo shoots, some sugar snap peas or snow peas. Um, and some bean sprouts. Now I'm just gonna work this into the sauce, cook it down a little bit until it gets tender. Now over here, our eggs are still hidden in here, I know you can't see them, but these are all our soup based packets, boiling water, starting to get up to temp. I'm about to add my noodles, so I'm just gonna give this a second more. I'm gonna mix this up and I will add my noodles to the broth. All right, so now that our water is starting to boil, I'm gonna add the noodles. These are what they look like as far as this brand. Um, they're round little pucks. Personally, I like throwing them in bowl because I like, I like my noodles completely intact. Some people like to break up the pucks. It's uh, entirely up to you. 
Also, um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but you can use whatever type of ramen you want. Um, you can use top ramen. You can you can find these this brand in most international aisles in any grocery store. It's uh, personally my favorite. So I'm gonna add the I added the pucks in here. I'll break them up as they start to heat up. And yeah, by the time my noodles are done, my eggs should be as well. But around the 11, 10 minute mark, I will pull these eggs out anyways if my noodles are done at that time. Um, and over here, I'm just kind of cooking these, getting these down to tender. You can cook them to taste. If you like vegetable softer, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna cook these down. Uh, a little bit more. I have my sauce in here still. But yeah, this it's starting to look good. I might add a little salt and pepper to taste. Who knows? Um, but yeah, everything's starting to look good, and our meal starting to come together. So we're almost done here. And yeah, I'll see you at plating. All right, so what I like to do personally is I, I kind of take two forks and like like it's a salad type situation, type deal, shout out to our girl. And I just scoop the noodles out first and put them in bowls. And then from there, I'll add some broth to the desired amount. Let's see, that's good. I don't wanna, I don't like putting too much broth, I do like trying to get these chunks here, but I mean, it's not the biggest thing. And from there, I will add my vegetables. So with this, you know, I will grab some meat, plate that up. I'll grab some of the mushroom and onion mixture. Grab some of the vegetables. Now, personally, I absolutely love kimchi. I find it like a necessity with any Asian dish that I'm making. Let's see. So, I just pick some up. Um, you can get many different kinds of it. Again, it's it kind of goes down to your taste. I mean, anytime you open a new package like this, it smells like farts in a jar, but it tastes better than it smells, I swear. It's just because it is a fermented product that it has that weird smell to it. It is Napa cabbage, it has some spices. Um, sometimes they use an Asian pear juice. But yeah, I'll throw some of that on. And then um, I'm just gonna get to my eggs. So I overdid my eggs just a little bit. Um, it, it's supposed to be, as I said, it's supposed to have a slightly runny yolk, but I didn't throw them in ice water when I took them out. So they continued cooking until they were done. But here's a completed dish. I like to top everything with some chives and some sesame seeds. So, here we go. All right, so now I have the toppings on. Now, personally, I like to just add a little bit of sriracha to just top the whole thing off. I like my dishes a little spicy, just like our girl. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned some ways to spice up some ramen and make some good ramen. Um, I guess I should probably take a bite on camera and have, you know, a mini eat with me type situation. So, all right, I'll see you in a moment. Here we are. I know that our girl likes to get a little bit of everything for a, a proper all encompassing bite, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that with the number of ingredients and toppings that we have. But here we go, that, oh my God. Um, all right, well, and uh, in the spirit of our girl, he is a, a, a big bite. Mm. 
Fantastic. Always love this dish. Love all variety of Asian foods, Asian culture foods. It's one of my favorite things to make, favorite things to eat. But yeah, I hope you you guys learned something. Um, I'll I'll check in after I eat this and do a proper outro. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a second. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think I've pretty much covered everything. My social medias are all the same: at less than a home, um, or at, at G, if you need to get in touch with me, less than a home at gmail.com. You can reach me there if you want to give video ideas. You can do me on Twitter. Thanks for the support. I really appreciate it, guys. And have a good one. I just forgot to mention that Zach's um, channel is public access and chill. All his links will be in the description. It said go support him, but didn't even say where to do so. So, yeah, just check down the description if you need to find any of the social medias for either of us. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did that. I did that.